Good morning, dear colleagues, dear guests. We are really glad to see you all at our briefing of uh, Ukrainian Prism. I am Ganna Shellist. I'm a member of the board, and I'm going to moderate our discussion today with wonderful guests. You see that we have one vacant seat. Uh, Mr. Klimkin will be with us soon, and uh, we'll start without him, and then he will join us. And uh, we're going to start now. So journalists who want to see him, he will join us a little bit later, and you will be able to speak with him at the end of our press conference. So what is the aim of our meeting? For several years, uh, we carry out expert survey about the biggest victories or failures during the year concerning foreign policy. This is expert survey. We state on this. Uh, and um, my colleague will present this report. And um, we will see next report in March. And there will be another presentation. And uh, today we are speaking about survey that we uh, hold. And uh, we um, presented. Uh, during Diplomacy Day, and uh, this is not only for the diplomats, but also for those who worked in foreign policy, who supported Ukrainian interests abroad. Our format this uh, will be like this. We have two hours on the whole, and we start with a small presentation of the research, of the survey, how our experts voted, and Sergei Gerasimchuk will present uh, this report, um, and he's deputy head of uh, Foreign Policy Council, uh, Ukrainian Prisma. And uh, uh, we will sum up what was done during five years, and we will ask Anna Gopko, uh, and she is former MP head of the Parliamentary Committee on Foreign Affairs, and she will provide her opinion about successes and failures in all areas. Then the floor will be given to Svetlana Zelichuk, advisor to the Prime Minister of Ukraine on Foreign Policy, and uh, to have an overall view on this topic. And then um, about uh, foreign policy failures and uh, um, achievements uh, will be presented by um, Petro Besh, the Deputy Director of the Directorate General on Policy Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Ukraine. And then Pavlo Klimkin will join us and will make his remarks. I will like to provide a spoiler. Those who participated in voting, you remember that we asked you about the most successful and quality and active depending on the nomination. Those media outlets who highlight uh, foreign policy and members of the parliament and uh, also we uh, foreign uh, offices uh, and offices of Ukraine abroad, uh, and we have traditional diplomas, and we will speak about them at the beginning. That's why be prepared, because maybe you are among the winners. So now the floor is given to Sergei, and he will tell us about voting made by our colleagues. Uh, dear colleagues, thank you for finding time to come today to hear the results of our survey. Traditionally, we asked questions concerning foreign policy of Ukraine, priorities in foreign policy of Ukraine. And traditionally, to some extent, we will compare last year's results with this year's result. The novelty, we asked uh, the question about five years that passed. Uh, and the results we got and during this period. And uh, Anna asked, how did we find this 100 experts? These were analytical centers, experts, uh, the, um, academic uh, experts, and foreign experts. So success uh, that we achieved this year. 29% uh, of experts believe that this is Normandy Summit in Paris. So this event, uh, uh, everyone waited for it for a long time. It was highlighted in the media. 
and the 29% believe that this is success. Also, many uh, experts believe that this is also a failure. Then next, uh, decisions of international courts to the benefit of Ukraine after gas case and the uh, UNO case in UNO and the uh, preservation of sanctions. 17% uh, mentioned release of Ukrainian prisoners, and 6% is preservation of course to EU and NATO, and that it was introduced to the Constitution of Ukraine. Speaking about failures of 2019, we will see that the majority, 40%, believe uh, that uh, the biggest failure is that Ukraine was drawn into internal uh, problems of USA um, uh, concerning a procedure of impeachment to Donald Trump in the US. One more failure is the return of uh, Russian Federation to the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. 13%, 9% believe that the uh, Normandy summit was a failure, not a win. Also, that uh, we were not able to stop uh, Nord Stream 2, 4 percent, and also loss of um, uh, unanimity in uh, the West uh, um, in support of Ukraine, 4 percent. Also, uh, we see that uh, association agreement uh, with EU, 26 percent support that, that this is success, the same situation with visa-free regime. 24% and experts believe that this is a victory of these five years. Also, formation and preservation of international pro-Ukrainian coalition 18, sanctions 16, and 6% said that international of international uh, decisions of international court. These are not only decisions of this year, but also these are uh, victories of the last uh, five years because uh, court hearings they uh, last for several years. So um, failures uh, during these five years, 16 percent believe that this is continuation of war with Russian Federation, 16 percent said that this is signing of uh, so-called Minsk II, and maybe also the issue of Minsk was raised in the summit uh, in Paris. and. Uh, uh, you may consider them flexible or not, these issues arise. 13% believe that uh, uh, Ukraine was involved in international scandal with Trump. This is uh, not only failure of uh, 2018, but also this is a failure for uh, of five years. Also, lack of progress with NATO, 9%. Deterioration of relations with NATO, 7%. And this figure dropped because last year, experts said, uh, uh, about uh, we had more experts who mentioned uh, failure in relation with triple Poland and Hungary, and also uh, marginalization of Crimean issue in international order. This is five percent, and we should state that uh, we have this opinion, and this opinion is important. If we are speaking about the assessment of current implementation of uh, international foreign policy, if you use five scores, we see some deterioration compared with last year. Last year, 44 percent of those who were surveyed put three, and 44 percent put four. This year, 59 percent of those who were surveyed uh, put three. As um, an estimate of uh, foreign policy of Ukraine in 2018, so here we have deterioration. Last year, one had uh, five, and this year, no one put five. If we are speaking about the problems that prevent efficient implementation of foreign policy of Ukraine year after year, we see the same results. The main problem last year and this year, this is lack of strategic vision in foreign policy of Ukraine, 81 percent. This is high. Uh, also, personnel, 61 percent lack of coordination between bodies of power, 44 percent, 51 percent believe that foreign aggression, Russian aggression against Ukraine also prevents efficient implementation of foreign policy in Ukraine, but the majority believes that the biggest problem is within Ukraine. It is not only connected with the uh, Russian Federation. 
Um, and we asked experts so what the foreign policy of Ukraine concerning the Russian Federation, uh, whether it meets uh, um, the expectations. And here we see changes last year. The situation was better. Last year, the majority of experts believed that uh, to full extent, uh, or in the majority of cases, it corresponds. Now the situation changed. And uh, about European Union, the situation remains. This year and last year, the majority of experts believe that policy of Ukraine concerning EU corresponds to expectations, and changes happened with US. Last year, the majority believe that it corresponds, and this year, the majority believe it doesn't correspond, 60% of those who were surveyed. Uh, friendly countries, no intrigue here. We have the same composition as last year, with only difference this year and last year, first position is taken by Lithuania. The majority of experts believe that uh, they are the most friendly to Ukraine. And if we have representative of Lithuanian embassy, maybe we do not have. I hope that our diplomats will inform them on this. The second place is taken by Canada, 50% of those who were surveyed say so. And the third position is Poland. This is an novelty. Last year, we didn't have Poland in among these five because of some deterioration of situation. And now the situation gets better. That's why Poland returned. Fifth and uh, fourth positions. <laughs> Greetings. Dear speakers, please speak to the mic because journalists and uh, interpreter, they do not hear you. Fourth position is taken by US and fifth position is taken by Estonia. No intrigue without the most hostile countries. <laughs> Do we have representatives, he asked. We do not have representatives of these countries. Unfortunately, we have them in the territory of Ukraine. The first position, Russian Federation, 99% of those who were surveyed. The same situation was last year. 99% mentioned Russia as the most hostile country towards Ukraine. And uh, why 1% is missing? Because one expert, uh, uh, he put uh, uh, he um, d didn't put his mark in uh, the um, this point. Uh, next, uh, Hungary. We are trying to regulate situation, and uh, we had a forum this year, Ukraine and Hungary, and it was rather constructive from both sides. Uh, there was constructive approach, but experts believe that it is still in the second place. 64% of uh, those who were surveyed mentioned this. 10% uh, uh, Belarus, an expert opinion. Uh, does not believe that uh, um, Lukashenko is friendly to Ukraine, Serbia, 9%. And the surprise is France. Last year, fifth position was shared by um, Austria. And uh, this year, they mentioned uh, France. Um, maybe maybe um, uh, they. Uh, 
we have now France uh, on the fifth position, and before it was uh, shared by Democratic People's Republic of Korea and uh, Australia, oh, and Austria, sorry. And um, about uh, um, those who highlight, who cover the news concerning foreign policy and international relations, first, uh, uh, the main Zerkala, uh, Tejnia, and Europejska Pravda, they compete this year. Europe, uh, Europejska Pravda won, and uh, with, uh, they have 63%. And we have Sergei, the representative of this news outlet here. <laughs> so our country should know its heroes. Second place as last year, Zerkala Tyshnia. Third place, like previous years, the newspaper. So we have three main leaders that remained. Fourth place, Ukrainian Truth, Ukrainska Pravda. And uh, ninth pl uh, and fifth place, uh, Sivodnia News Outlet. And uh, last year, fourth uh, place was taken by uh, Liu Birik and the Radio Liberty last year took fifth place. Uh, the most active people's deputies who promote uh, interests of Ukraine abroad. First place is taken by Ganna Gapko as last year she also took the first place and this year the same. Each year she does this. We have doubts uh, uh, about several votes. Uh, one expert called you Ganna Gapko and uh, one expert called you Garna Gopko. Uh, next one, uh, Klim Pushtsensadze. Last year she was not a member of the uh, parliament, and uh, now she is uh, leading uh, the second place. And uh, third place, Irina Gerashenka, Vladimir Aryev, Alexei Gancherenka, fifth place. And uh, uh, they uh, work actively in the parliamentary assembly of the Council of Europe. And also, uh, embassies and the representative offices. This are uh, our office uh, at UNO, EU, uh, our embassy in Austria, in Poland, and in Germany. And I would like to pay attention to the embassy in Poland. Their work uh, was really active, and uh, they contributed, and Poland appeared among the countries who are the most friendly to Ukraine. About priorities, traditionally, this is European and Euro-Atlantic integration of Ukraine, current direction to Russian aggression, and preservation of pro-Ukrainian coalition and cooperation with U.S. Cooperation with the U.S. is among priorities. Uh, 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 at the backdrop of the duration of the situation, experts understand that the situation should be corrected. So this was an open question about short-term prospect about the most uh, uh, important areas. EU, 65% Central and Eastern Europe, 56 Black Sea region, 29%. This year, uh, we spoke a lot about China and the uh, Southern East Asia. This year, we have it. And the Eastern Partnership, also a minus five with 14%. If you're speaking about where we can be leaders, not only promote our interests, here is Eastern Partnership, 47%. Uh, uh, we, uh, the experts believe that Ukraine may take leadership positions, and 21% believe that Ukraine cannot be a leader at all. Priority tasks and issues for Ukraine for 2020. Naturally, 80 Six percent believe that this is counteraction to Russian aggression. Fifty-seven believe that this is Euro-Atlantic integration. Thirty-eight percent implementation of the association agreement with the EU. Twenty-eight percent promotion of positive image of Ukraine and economization of foreign policy of Ukraine is a, a new trend in this survey. Forty percent believe that uh, foreign investment uh, should be attracted to Ukraine, and we should work on this on the international arena. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope it, were, it was interesting, and I invite you to discussion, to discuss foreign policy of Ukraine and our report as well. 
I would like to provide a methodological remark. We didn't propose the answers you should understand that practically all these answers, uh, except this one, two, three, four, five, uh, these all were open and experts would could propose countries, drawbacks, successes uh, that they believe thought we have an uh, uh, objective picture. We didn't propose options. We, as the Ukrainian prism, did not provide these uh, um, names of the countries. We just provided them with the opportunity to provide their own opinion. And uh, we have objective picture, and uh, we see the activity in different areas and different problems of the areas. So we were speaking about victories, but we should start with uh, these five years that now end. So what was our success and what was the failure in these five years? Uh, this is not about shame. This is about improvement. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you for this wonderful survey. It provides us with opportunity to see how we can improve foreign policy and to see those gaps that prevent us from being proactive and subjective. Uh, so um, I remember 2013, I remember the visit of uh, Magherini, and we had a closed uh, uh, meeting, uh, we had supper, and we asked why she didn't travel to the east. She spoke about reforms instead of aggression of Russia, and she said, when once I saw Putin, I saw him in 2014, and uh, you should uh, wait for millions of uh, people from Ukraine, because Ukraine will fail, there will be collapse, and uh, you will see the breakdown of the state. And this happened, uh, and uh, this was said in 2014. And you remember the times uh, after Yanukovych, GDP fell 10%, uh, and uh, um, we didn't have an army, no international coalition. So these were realia because someone blames uh, predecessors. But if you remember uh, elections uh, of the president in 2019, and uh, also uh, these things that were inherited by these deputies, and this, uh, um, we cannot even compare these things. After Maidan, we came to um, the parliament. We wanted to have such a situation that our parliamentarians face now. We should be thankful. We should understand uh, that institutions, uh, they are built, and uh, there should be continuity. And uh, these five years were the years of uh, uh, the, um, uh, that we tried to create our national team inside the country and to improve position of Ukraine uh, on the international arena, to establish good coordination between presidential administration, parliament, and the uh, foreign uh, ministry, and uh, to establish such a team, national team. After elections, uh, we see that uh, the Committee on Foreign Affairs is paralyzed, and there is miscoordination between um, the uh, bodies, and one of the ambassadors said to me that uh, uh, our embassy in Vatican does not know that the representative uh, of Ukraine is going there, and uh, I believe that it shows that uh, there is institutional defect, I would say. Going back to these five years, uh, what we are able to achieve, uh, the key task for us, strategic goal, is to restore territorial integrity. Uh, and our sovereignty with the use of uh, different instruments, including diplomatic instruments. In 2016, when we held parliamentary hearings uh, on the actual issues of foreign policy, one of uh, the issues was to adopt uh, the law on diplomatic uh, service. It was vetoed by the fifth president uh, because of the norm on consultations 
in the Committee in Foreign Affairs before nomination of the ambassadors, and this was the year was why. Uh, but this law was approved, and uh, um, we have a year uh, of this law. Uh, it was introduced into power. It is progressive and important. We are, were able to reach it. Also, I believe that one of the achievements important for the diplomats that starting 2015, we um, increased funding for um, the ministry. We had. Uh, um, uh, 300 million more in 2016 and uh, 1 billion in 2017. So, situation with money improved. And uh, Svetlana and Klimpush Tsinsadze, they mentioned that it is important to contribute to these bodies, and now we see that their work improved because of the funding. Also, in Constitution, uh, we introduced a point concerning membership in EU, and no one mentioned here about economization of foreign policy, but in these five years, taking into account that Russian foreign aggression started with trade wars in 2013 uh, due to the blockade of our products, and also we filed uh, the case uh, because Russia blocked uh, our goods to, to Kyrgyzstan, and uh, we um, put a lot of effort during these five years in order that our products reached other markets. There was an agreement on free trade with the EU, uh, also free trade agra agreement with Canada. And 2016, it was introduced into effect also free trade agreement with Israel. These are the documents, and Daniel Mikulska and uh, other colleagues worked on these documents. Also, committee paid a lot of attention to Africa. Starting in 2015, we had the Days of Africa in Parliament, and also together with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we did it because it is really a uh, big market. China now uh, has a big influence there, and we also should uh, deal with Africa more, and we hope that we will have new markets there. One important um, aspect is the identity of Ukraine in the international uh, arena, counteraction to propaganda, creation and financial strengthening of National Institute of Memory, creation of Ukrainian Institute. I have many concerns about its work. We had expectations. Unfortunately, we do not see that our expectations realized. And uh, uh, 60 million was allocated this year. Uh, and the Ukrainian Cultural Fund Institute of uh, Book Publishing and institutes that should work for strengthening of image of Ukraine. There's a soft power in order that we be able to uh, bring information about Ukraine, why we fight for our place in history. Also, the Hovna Rada, the committee, also addressed in 2016 to democratic countries of the world in order uh, to recognize Galadamor as a genocide, it's a genocide and Portugal um, recognized. Uh, um, uh, Galadomor is uh, genocide, and we thanked uh, uh, the ambassador um, for this. Now, uh, uh, we believe that uh, we should continue these efforts also. Um, we initiated a big uh, uh, event. Uh, there were big memorial events in the Verkhovna Rada to commemorate the victims of uh, Galadomor. So this is the historic direction started with Bundestag deputies concerning historic responsibility of Germany before Ukraine starting 2016, and I hope that this will continue. This is really important for German uh, society uh, because Germany plays a big role in uh, Normandy format. Uh, they should understand why they should help Ukraine. In these five years, also, a lot of work has been done, addresses uh, to de-escalate situation in the East. In 2015, after shellings of Mariupol, Volnavaha, 
When we adopted the resolution to recognize Russia as aggressor, we addressed the international community to release Ukrainian citizens, Ushin Kasinsov, and tens of round tables about ratification of Rome Statute and also Magnitsky Act approval. So, international humanitarian protection of the rights of people. And uh, this was in the diplomacy um, of uh, on, uh, in the diplomacy sphere. And uh, during these years, we were able to support uh, uh, the coalition and the OAC and uh, NATO and the Council of Euro uh, resolution were supported. And uh, we believe that uh, Ukraine became a contributor to European security, and many partners understand the geopolitical importance of Ukraine in the uh, global security. And at the end, I would like to say that it is really difficult to see what is going on with the parliamentary diplomacy now. Uh, we want that the president and the speaker and faction, uh, uh, servant of people, they should identify proper candidature because uh, many months were spoiled now. They should uh, really get these opportunities. And uh, one of the failures uh, during these years, together with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, we invited them to our community. Uh, we spoke with them with uh, trade agreements uh, about trade agreements with the Russian Federation, and we believe that we had many failures in this, and also failures concerning rotation of diplomats. Some ambas ambassadors, uh, they are in one country for tens of, year tens of years, but we should have uh, limited terms for these ambassadors in order that they um, represent Ukraine in a good way in these countries and also uh, some misunderstandings and uh, a lack of informing in the trilateral contact uh, group and uh, at the level of advisors and uh, we established the Minsk platform and uh, we believe that it will be beneficial to inform the deputies, especially of uh, opposition political forces who addressed uh, these issues of the red lines uh, and then uh, parliamentary presidential republic, this is important in order that uh, uh, to improve the work at the level of advisors, and uh, there should be proper communication channel. And one more direction we dealt with in the parliament, international um, courts, uh, um, and filing cases, Stockholm arbitration, uh, bit, uh, arbitrary court. And uh, there were 10 events in the Verkhovna Rada concerning Nord Stream 2, energy strategy of Ukraine, diversification, how to uh, transform Ukraine to make it uh, uh, not important but export of gas and uh, also about our victory. Maybe this is not directly in foreign policy and diplomacy, but uh, the victory of Ukraine is Oshad Bank. Um, victory, uh, 1 billion, 300 million. Uh, uh, this is compensation for occupation of Crimea and the Shed Bank didn't get its benefits. They didn't get access to the offices. And this result inspires us. We see that there are achievements in international courts. But there were heavy battles among the bodies. Uh, there was no um, proper coordination about, uh, among our bodies. Uh, and we will be able to achieve more with proper coordination. We should counteract Russian aggression. We should use uh, international courts in our fight. And we hope that this trend will continue and we will see clear results there. And the issue of Crimea. Here I would like to 
say that starting 2014, there was resolution of UNO, 100 uh, countries supported Ukraine, and uh, that Ukraine is Ukraine, and the resolution uh, of UNO, they recognized Russia as uh, occupants, and the yearly resolutions of UNO concerning violations of human rights and occupied Crimea. This is, I believe, a really important achievement. We should not forget about Crimea at the same time. We may say that we should provide more priority to Crimea. And the last area, I agree that during these years, we were trying to work on the strategy of foreign policy together with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And it is um, based on the results of the parliamentary hearings in 2016. We didn't have proper strategy. We just tried to oppose uh, through sanctions, through international coalition. I believe that during these five years, uh, the Verkhovna Rada, and I would like to thank some of uh, expert centers and representatives of indigenous peoples who here in Ukraine represent Pavolzhia, six republics, and uh, Uralis. And uh, the Verkhovna Rada adopted the resolution addressed to UNO, to the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe and OSCE to condemn the repressions uh, and policies of simulation uh, carried out by Kremlin against uh, national minorities and indigenous peoples in Russian Federation. We saw response by Russian out news outlets, and we see that uh, this is offensive actions, uh, and uh, um, we should pay attention to this uh, international politics because uh, Russia uses uh, the Security Council of UNO and uh, they consider uh, the functioning of a state uh, uh, language and we cannot initiate the issue concerning um, uh, the activity uh, of some bodies in Russian Federation. And Udmurti uh, as a scientist um, set himself on fire, and uh, the issue of human rights in the territory of Russian Federation, we should raise these issues. And Macron speaks about uh, uh, humanity, about uh, these topics, so we should remind about these uh, topics and the, the map of Uralis, I, it was in my study, and then it was removed. I do not know why. So are we satisfied with the, our perception of relations with the Russian Federation? I believe that uh, after yesterday's uh, um, press conference, the president, he should understand that uh, he has only one enemy, and he is in Kremlin. And the representatives of different parties, they are allies, and he should negotiate and agree with them. He should have a dialogue to search how to pragmatically protect our interests. And the last conclusion, I believe that in these five years, we got deprived of our illusions, and we understood. And I believe that uh, we have our own interests, uh, and we cannot protect uh, our interests without proper national team. We cannot do it separately by efforts of uh, Yermak or someone else. Uh, uh, so, uh, Svetlana, now uh, maybe we should make a bridge between the past and uh, today and to the future. Do we have strategic areas in foreign policy that uh, has this continuity no matter what forces in power, who represents uh, it in the cabinet of ministers. Can we say that uh, there are some pr real priorities uh, that uh, has can have continu continuity? We, un we understand that uh, um, Petro will speak about these issues, but nevertheless, Prime Minister has many instruments and opportunities in order to have his own agenda in these issues. What are the priorities and uh, what is taken from the past and what is planned for the future? First of all, I would like to thank you for your research. I would like to thank Anna for her wonderful speech. In order to answer your question, um, presidential administration is lacking because uh, uh, 
the celebration of the strategy of foreign policy uh, it should be done by the government. And as an advisor to the prime minister, I would like to say that Ukrainian state uh, what it needs and to uh, say what prime minister does now and what our priorities concerning foreign policy. I would like to start with the strategy and what we are lacking. I believe that uh, it is even lacking more than uh, in 2014 because previously we understood that we need sanctions, coalition, opposition to Russian aggression, and now geopolitical context uh, is changing rapidly. And we should think about, I would say, these tectonic changes in which Ukraine uh, tries to promote its interests. Uh, what I'm speaking about, I see that during these five years, Euro Atlantic unity decreased. I'm speaking about relations between the EU and the USA. And this was one of the main factors uh, that influenced us and our ability to achieve our um, interests. What is going on in the US and in Europe and uh, with the changes of the leadership, rise of populism and the left and right populism in many European capitals. This change is felt, and this differs 2014 from 2019. Uh, Brexit should be mentioned, exit of one of the main players from those this round table where these prospects of uh, Ukraine concerning European integration were discussed. Also, change of situation in NATO, emergence of new challenges. I'm speaking about uh, Middle East and uh, Turkey. They now buy Russian missiles, and uh, uh, they have now different weapons than NATO country and increased escalation in North Atlantic bloc. And uh, this prevents Ukraine from moving ahead as well. Also, Anna mentioned France and the new flirt of Macron with uh, Russia and try, trying to make Russia more European. Uh, we remember this reset policy of U.S. Uh, that America started in 2011, and it led to this uh, full-fledged war in Ukraine. And, uh, we see that this uh, direction is not successful. Also, uh, Western Balkans and influence of Russia there, they tried uh, to topple some governments there, and Russia is transforming Serbia in armored Balkan leader, especially when France uh, did not provide clear uh, prospects uh, uh, to Northern Macedonia and Albania. And uh, uh, now Russia um, has opportunity to strengthen its foreign policy. This is about Turkey. We saw the situation with Kurds. Uh, Russia increased its muscles there, and uh, also they uh, create uh, some military bases uh, there and in uh, uh, Balkans, and uh, they cooperate with many populist uh, governments, and we see how it is reflected even on the wish to continue sanctions and on the discourse concerning what should be done with the sanctions uh, against Russia. We saw that during these five years, our friends, our allies, uh, they uh, um, do not have big wish to continue sanctions. Why I'm speaking about this context? It is really important in order uh, for Ukraine to have significant results in its foreign policy. That's why today we need to create concept of this uh, problem to see what is going on in the world and uh, how we as a country uh, may uh, promote ourselves to reach solidarity, to fight for our interests, and to reach success. 
I believe that this is one of the most important areas for our country and the administration of the president and the, the parliament and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they should work together in order to reach new vision how to achieve good results. So uh, this is about the context, and now I'm going to speak about directions uh, um, and uh, uh, how we may fight these challenges, uh, those that we inherited and those that emerge, and uh, uh, about our institutional memory and uh, our parliament that uh, continues to work, and about coalition and sanctions, counteraction to Russian aggression at all levels. So this is the key areas throughout the spectrum of our foreign policy activity. I would like to speak about international courts, and I would like to state that in conditions in these conditions, political solidarity is high, hard to reach. I speak about uh, uh, big policy. And uh, uh, the role of court decisions uh, is really uh, on the increase. Uh, so some try to return Russia to G8 platform. We understand that some European leaders or even to return uh, Russia to the uh, Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. Uh, some leaders want to forgive this aggression of Russia. That's why for us we need to establish Russian responsibility. This is not about even politics, but about um, legal sphere. Uh, um, international criminal court, you know, court, uh, uh, human rights court, uh, there are many cases there, and this is one of the key areas in order to establish strategic responsibility, responsibility of Russia um, concerning its aggression against Ukraine. Also, I would like to note that this is one of the main priorities for the Prime Minister. This is uh, uh, foreign economic activity. And uh, uh, many leaders of Europe, they, uh, uh, they uh, do not have uh, this wish to accept us in the community, and uh, we should become stronger. Uh, we should not, not only be a political nation, we should also be able to uh, deal better uh, in economic in, uh, sphere, and uh, you know that uh, uh, Germany now holds uh, not enough friendly position towards Ukraine, especially concerning Nord Stream 2. Uh, so ec economy is uh, the most important for prime minister and attraction of foreign investment, anti-corruption -cor reforms, not declarations uh, like it was done previously. As a member of parliament, uh, I know we speak spoke about uh, uh, fighting corruption, but this was only talking about it. I'm speaking about environment, the system of coordinates, and uh, we, ho we want foreign investors to come here. And then through investment, we should influence the governments of uh, France, Germany, and uh, they should see that they really need Ukraine. This is an important link. This is important ecosystem uh, of uh, foreign economic uh, uh, policy, and this is the basis for uh, foreign policy of Ukraine in the future. And you've mentioned Asian and Chinese uh, direction. I believe this is extremely important to build economy in these areas. I believe that during the last five years, uh, uh, we didn't do enough. Uh, we had uh, Russia as our priority. We should pay attention more to other areas. I know that the Minister of Foreign Affairs carry out audit uh, concerning efficiency of foreign policy, and uh, new direction should be built, and I believe that this is a really important story. And one more important priority is our energy security. This is not stream and the certification of our energy streams. Uh, recently, 
an agreement was signed about trans Balkan uh, gas uh, line through Bulgaria and Romania and to Ukraine and Moldova. This is really important. Uh, 15, um, 16 million. B million of cubic meters of gas may flow there daily, and also uh, with Norway we signed an agreement that Nord Stream remains one of the biggest threats in this area. Recently we visited U.S. last week together with uh, Vice Premier Kuleba. We met with the senators of, uh, and congressmen in both chambers with both parties, with Republicans and Democrats, and, and in the um, Security and Defense Council. And uh, uh, we want to uh, commu uh, cooperate and to reach results. And there is a chance to Uh, to delay this project uh, of Nord Stream 2. And uh, we see that uh, two chamber parliament uh, bipartisan support, we see it in U.S. And uh, uh, there is draft law to allocate one billion uh, to Europe to increase uh, energy security. And Senator Murphy is uh, co-author. And together with John McCain, uh, we met with him. And then uh, new sanctions, these uh, uh, really hard sanctions are considered, and uh, other projects. So preservation of uh, contacts at the uh, at this level is really important, and energy security is the mainstream in the context of this cooperation. Also, I would like to say about NATO and European integration. This is also one of the pillars of foreign policy in the context of European integration. We understand that we should be pragmatic, we should seize markets, and we should reinforce our integration when we do not see this uh, opportunity to become members, but we should approximate Europe nevertheless. This is energy, digital, customs, integration. We plan two things for next year, modernization of the agreement and uh, revision of the quota on tariffs and uh, outside quota tariffs and uh, to decrease it for our goods. We want to start this. And uh, the second one is uh, industrial visa free regime in order that our industrial goods uh, any products uh, be able to seize European markets. So I believe if we reach it, if we reach this uh, assessment mission, this will be one more like visa free regime for Ukrainian economy. This will be the next step of the relations between Ukraine and Europe. And about NATO, I would like to say that the government fights to to get uh, enhanced opportunity partnership in order that uh, in order that ukraine got it uh, uh, and uh, to increase opportunities of cooperation between ukraine and nato and the last point is the operation of modern policy in cooperation with our diaspora diaspora is uh, the a really big uh, social capital, and together with Ukraine, it may add uh, to success of our foreign policy. As of today, uh, draft laws are developed, and this will provide opportunities to our diaspora to have two passports for our diaspora. And the ministry develops, uh, the, uh, they develop the opportunity to create electronic instruments to uh, improve cooperation with the Ukrainian side uh, to start and uh, 
uh, to do business uh, in Ukraine. And this is one of the key areas to reinforce opportunities for advocacy of Ukraine abroad and the fighting of Ukraine abroad for its interests and to increase opportunity to return people uh, to Ukraine, both uh, my, uh, my, um, migrants and diaspora. So uh, this is the end of my speech. Maybe you will have questions later on. Uh, we will speak first with Piotr, and uh, uh, Pavlo will see the results, and then uh, he uh, will have his uh, speech uh, taking into account our results. G uh, going back uh, to 2019, and you saw the results of the research and what was said by Ganna and Svetlana, and uh, maybe the Polis, foreign policy became a hostage of domestic policy in 2019. We understand uh, that we have two main problems uh, with, that we have on the first places of our um, in our rating, but there are problems of coordination between institutions that are responsible for foreign policy and other issues. And at the end of the year, do you feel uh, that we have uh, that our year, our 2019, is not as efficient as it could be. First, I would like to thank Prisma for this initiative, which here we sum up, and uh, uh, it is always interesting what results we got, how to increase our efficiency, how to work better next year, how to build teams. This is really important, and we thank you for this event. If we are speaking about domestic policy, uh, we know that electoral years, uh, they are really hard in any country, in Europe, in US. Elections will be next year, and you see that this year is really disturbing for domestic policy in US. And Ukraine is not an exception. Election year is really difficult. Teams, when they change, this is difficult time, time is needed, and we are moving in this direction. I would like to speak about uh, uh, some topics based on the topics that were mentioned. We thank Anna Gabko and others who joined us to deal with these difficult issues. And uh, there was uh, the law on uh, the diplomatic service and the financing. And this is the effort of the big team, and I would like to focus attention on this. So we are living in the world that is multi-layered, multi-format, uh, hybrid policy, hybrid aggression, they call it these days. And uh, teams are really important, the team that is able to build these multi-layers forms of cooperation to coordinate actions, to develop strategies, policies quickly, and to implement them. Uh, then actors, they may be really powerful if they are in the team. So these five years, they were big progress. All the players got together, politicians, diplomats. We remember about parliamentary diplomacy. It was clearly coordinated with foreign policy, classic diplomacy, coordinated with economic and party and expert. And uh, this is what we do during these years. And we develop expert diplomacy. And Prisma and all the experts, they are active. Uh, they participate actively. And we are working with experts from abroad. We brought our, bring our narratives, our views. And uh, I believe that uh, the team has the chance for success. Going back to the assessments that were provided in this, uh, this survey, we said about the need of uh, the strategic view, strategy in foreign policy. This is correct. Uh, when the context qu quickly changes, uh, and it changes really deeply, the issue of the strategy, it is uh, really important. This is not about strategy. It's about the ability to adapt to the changes. 
we are working actively in diplomatic uh, academy together with expert community. We have been dealing it for a year, and the uh, first results were presented. Uh, this is called not the concept, but we hope that the concept that more describes the situation will be focused on the strategic goals, uh, not only strategy, not only overall strategy. It is difficult to combine all directions in one strategy. We will develop strategies in different directions, because strategy is based on some problem. When we have problem, there is a need to create a strategy that can overcome the problem. If we look at all these problems that are before us concerning security, aggression, European integration, and how to find uh, the place uh, in the situation, we should speak about strategies in different areas, and this will bring big benefit. Uh, to our team and uh, to our um, uh, view for the future. The survey, uh, in the survey, we saw that France is among hostile countries towards Ukraine. Uh, and uh, maybe you should go to Paris more often. You should meet with your French counterparts. We were there months ago. You should do it constantly. We know what is behind those changes in France in its policy. One of the biggest roles there, these experts and the foreign policy lobby in France, they uh, are more inclined to Russia, and I hope that you should go to France more, and you will find the opportunity to bring Ukrainian messages to your counterparts there. This is one of the aspects of our work. You, as experts, should go to Paris and speak with the counterparts there more about plans for the future in foreign policy. We are speaking about Ukraine, that in five years Ukraine changed a lot. We rethought many things. We, I would say, grow up. And uh, we should write new vision, new strategy of foreign policy, and we should rethink ourselves, our interests, to rethink international context and to put all forces, all efforts, and to understand what is the role of Ukraine in this new context. There is a big system, and Ukraine should find its role that is practical, pragmatic, and corresponds our interests that we should formulate and domain. It should be based on our forces, on our strengths. We should become a reliable element of the system that is really needed element. This is not just consumer of resources, economic, financial, and security resources. It becomes a subject of this game, and our partners should be able to rely on us. And uh, we should work as a team, both in Europe and in the country. Uh, so you've mentioned uh, about French uh, cheese and wine, but Ukrainian Prism held the event in March in Paris. We spoke with French experts, and uh, in October I visited Paris twice. I understand those experts who put uh, Fra uh, Frenchmen in this list. Uh, and. Uh, a German expert came up to me and he said that uh, if you say that Germans do something that you do not like, I will tell you what Frenchmen said. Uh, so this was the response of our partners to the latest changes in sentiments in Paris. Expert community worked uh, with Hungary. Maybe we will be able to work properly also with our French counterparts. I would like uh, 
to ask. We had experts who voted uh, without our help. Five the most productive representative offices uh, uh, of Ukraine in EU, uh, in uh, um, Austria, in uh, um, uh, you know, in EU, in Austria, in Poland, in Germany. So these are five main representative uh, offices where Ukraine had the most success in fifteen in these five years. Uh, we uh, assessed 2019, but also this is not the only victory uh, we are speaking about uh, all five years. So what are the biggest uh, successes in promotion of foreign interests? Maybe we as experts didn't see some good results, and you may help us. It is difficult uh, to say something about expert opinion. Uh, so. So, uh, I do not agree with this assessment. I believe that there are things that were forgotten. For example, Canada, uh, if you're speaking about work of the embassy and the achievements and the global policy, that's why. For example, I'm surprised about Austria. There, there was media coverage, but I cannot uh, say that we reached a lot. This is really a surprise for me. About UNO, maybe yes, but look, about several months, let's say about experts, we speak about the procedure of impeachment. This problem for Ukraine, I believe this is not only a problem, this is a catastrophe. For 10 or 15 years at least, and US Embassy is not mentioned here. There was reset foreign policy. Someone believes that this is reset, but I believe that this is a process that cannot be named as reset. If you like Westerns, you may see that there is a process that is ongoing. Some, but I do not agree with this logic. There should be UNO in the first five there should be European Union. Also, I agree that there should be Poland, maybe Germany, because there a lot has been done. Maybe experts even do not see everything that was done there. This is my subjective assessment. Experts do this based on their own ideas, and this is also a subjective story. So to establish who is more productive, uh, this idea to establish who was more productive in promotion of our uh, interests is um, really interesting. So here we have picture. Here we have uh, USA and Canada on the slide. These are friendly countries. And maybe this is also about work of embassies. Uh, so this is two-way road. And we have it. Also, we would like, what would you, what would you like to see in 2020? about friendly countries. We would like to see all countries uh, that they all friend are friendly to us. Uh, yesterday's press conference of Putin should be disseminated as an element of domestic propaganda. Just cut out pieces in order to understand policy of Russia for the years ahead. And those who say 
that Russia will be trading and to increase stakes. So these are, this is not the level of ambitions of Russia, for example, Belarus. They should, uh, they'd like to build a new reality. It's like a Soviet, uh, a Soviet empire rebuilding, 3.0. So this aim will be realized and the priorities of domestic and foreign policy, and I cannot say how we separate to these policies. This is also uh, difficult for me. We should preserve our country. This is the main, not something else. And as of today, Putin will see what the, will be results of the elections in the U.S., and then he will continually will implement his goals. Uh, in this, I'm sure 100%. And who will be friendly or less friendly? This is an interesting thing. And I believe that the Ukrainian prism uh, did it right, that they held this survey, but this is no, what, not what uh, we need. We need a, a level, a average level of solidarity to have such a common denominator to have support for us. And this is not evident as of today. The world changes. If you want to have my opinion, I would like to say that today's logic of the world system, this will change and what will be the driver we'll live and see whether it will be the financial crisis on the global level or some serious conflicts but we should clearly understand that today's system it is not only in deep crisis it uh, it's not working at all and what will be and what uh, w it will mean for us this is the main question for us for experts and what we need to do and lastly, what I always say, we will be helped until we help ourselves. And we should fight for ourselves. In today's context in the world, uh, nothing will be simple. Uh, there is a complete reset. And, uh, um, now the situation in the global system becomes so different. Uh, Lithuania is really friendly to us. Ukrainians and Lithuanians, even in Stalin's uh, camps, uh, they uh, were uh, really close. And uh, Ukrainians and Lithuanians, uh, they supported each other. And this is not only about policy. The same uh, with U.S., uh, Lithuania, Canada, they are our friends. Unfortunately, we do not understand each other clearly with Poland. We do not understand the importance of their issues and vice versa. We should understand uh, in the relations with Poland, we should understand that we are speaking another language. Well, we should uh, start speaking one language. This is that simple. One m more brief question. And then Svetlana will provide a comment, and then we will have Q&A session for our participants about expert diplomacy. I would like to remind to you about Portal of Foreign Policy, where experts of national, uh, different institutions are presented, the different analysis that is prepared for different bodies of state power at the Ministry of Foreign uh, Affairs, Parliament, and the Ministry of Defense, and other ministries. And we thank uh, uh, Renaissance, and uh, oh, we ha uh, ha uh, thank. Uh, uh, the portal that, uh, uh, and we thank for those who created this portal. And uh, what about the failures of these five years? Uh, and uh, uh, what about foreign policy? What do you believe? This is not a question to you as a minister, but uh, 
to you as a representative of the state uh, the fear what we failed and where we will be able to get success. Uh, we would like to join European Union and NATO, and we didn't succeed on this, and in the nearest future we won't be able to do this. But in order to do this, we should constantly work. What we could do better, I believe that experts should say about this. Then historians will write dissertations, books, maybe we will read them if we have time. But in reality, it is difficult to make these assessments. I believe that uh, these five years, they were influenced heavily by war whether uh, there is a strategy or not, and w of what the strategy will be. Um, our foreign policy will be identified not by strategy, even if all experts get together. If we write the best strategy, this will be first based on economy, and we understand the situation we face, and the trend is not positive. Second, it will be identified by emotions just human emotions. We see what is going on. We see the sentiments of society, and we understand it. And it will be identified by uh, outside players. Foreign policy is really, and unfortunately, is really important for Ukraine. Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, once said to me that uh, we had coalition agreements, and no one wants to be the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Everyone wants to be Minister of Domestic Affairs uh, or other, uh, other ministries, but uh, they do not know what they can do in politics. Uh, and I asked him, do you agree on this position? He said, yeah, I agreed. But for Ukraine, foreign policy is really vital, something existential. For us, foreign policy, until it is really important, uh, we believe that we will have more to do more. But this won't happen tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. What I believe is really important, what we did in these five years, is that uh, we uh, now people respect us. Before Maidan, no one respected Ukraine as political nation. No one respected us. No Orange Revolution, nothing changed it. And Maidan, this is a moment starting from which we as people, as country, uh, we became respected. And respect, it uh, uh, you should earn it uh, uh, during many years, tens of years, and it is easy to lose it. And we should develop, and uh, we uh, should be visible. You've mentioned France, uh, and uh, in Paris, uh, people even cannot show Ukraine in the map. Uh, I do not say about politicians. Uh, go to the streets of Paris, and you will see it. So. Uh, First, we became visible. We, uh, they started to respect us. And also, they speak about uh, subject and object. Uh, and I am irritated by uh, these terms during discussions. We had our game. And I hope that this game will start next year. And I will see some signs of it. Uh, for the last half year, we didn't have this game. Partly this is conscious, partly it is the influence of foreign players. We do not uh, we know who they are. And uh, uh, there are signs that we will have our own Ukrainian game and foreign policy. I believe that this is the most important. And the rest is left to experts and historians. Svetlana, your comment. Briefly, I would like to comment what Pavlo Anatolievich said about the logic of organization of today's order in the world. I believe that this is one of the most important aspects. As of today, if you ask European Union or NATO what is their view of the European Union in 10 or 20 years, they do not have a concept of this uh, order of the world. And in Russia, they have it. And we uh, saw it during uh, yesterday's Putin conference. And in China, they have it. And in Ukraine, we have such a concept. 
we see our space as a European space, Euro-Atlantic, uh, European integration, uh, Eastern partnership countries. Uh, uh, this is our concept for 10 or 20 years. Um, and uh, what is important here, we have good guys, democratic Western countries, Western countries in the world, they should have common view of the world that they share. And they may mobilize the resources to implement this, but we won't be able to reach our goals without their support. So this is a turbulent period when the world is in post-truth and post-West and post-order. Uh, this is the stage when we should increase our economic potential and our success in the uh, uh, foreign uh, economy area, uh, foreign energy security area. This uh, will help us uh, to not to miss this window of opportunities uh, and to uh, get our place among democratic nations in the world. So the synergy of these sectors, uh, but the recent events showed that there are many concerns, especially when the team was changed in Ukraine. There is vacuum of information, and I believe that the visit of Prime Minister to London demonstrated this. In two weeks, there will be event. And uh, we had the event with uh, Chatham House, uh, 250 people, people see reforms, changes, but no clear understanding what is going on. And many events held by Prisma and other colleagues in Paris, Berlin, Brussels, uh, it shows that in order to open doors for us, not just windows, we should promote ourselves to explain who we are, uh, to be also good guys in order to be perceived as uh, one of these good guys, not someone from outside. So we have uh, some time for Q&A session. Please introduce yourself, speak to the mic. We have it and uh, that uh, this is not about commenting for half an hour. I remember you're not alone here. Someone else also wants to ask questions. Please provide clear and concise questions in order that our speakers be able to answer them quickly. I see a hand there. Irina Shdanova, I am a journalist from Ukrainian radio. I have a question to Pavlo Anatolievich. Could you explain us why do you believe that impeachment to U.S. is the problem for us for 10 or 15 years? And what, in your opinion, should be done in current situation in order to minimize the involvement of Ukraine in the domestic struggle in U.S.? Maybe two questions and now answers. First row, please. One more question to the discussion. Bogdan Nagaila. I see that we are not efficient in our foreign policy. Uh, for example, concerning UNO, voting in General Assembly, 2014, and now. The majority abstain or vote against our sponsored resolution. And uh, is this success? No. We are not even in the place we were before. Also speaking with people from diaspora, uh, they are really concerned about the work of the embassy. They say that this is mechanic work. They expect that uh, the diaspora works with public relations and protests, and they are sitting there. And this old system from the previous year, and uh, uh, there are some exceptions, uh, like Canada, for example. Do we really have the Minister of Foreign Affairs that influence foreign policy today? We have perception that this ministry and uh, the minister, they play some ceremonial roles. And some small circle around the president decides all. What is your view on this? Because uh, people from outside see this. So what is the position of foreign policy and uh, what about its development? 
Maybe the third question. Leonid Khamikov, journalist and system analyst. Your successes are evident in diplomacy. Mr. Minister clearly stated that foreign policy is impossible to separate from domestic policy and from strategic policy. I have a question. As I see it, your diplomatic successes, these are diplomatic money, bitcoins, but they should be exchanged for real values. And simple people wait this for from our politicians. Who can tell us? What changes due to your efforts happened in the France? We have war. What territories we got through diplomatic efforts? What is correlation? What about the losses uh, of aggressors and uh, our forces? And what about uh, uh, information? So uh, please, uh, and the next one. And then we will go back to you and the second round questions. Good afternoon. Strategic. So uh, we are on the 65th place in the foreign trade uh, uh, with France. About the strengthening of role of uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs concerning uh, foreign economic activity, foreign trade, and the increase of uh, uh, foreign trade role. Uh, question to Zarishuk, advisor to the Prime Minister. As I remember, the government of Groisman developed the program of uh, the building a system of trade representative offices of different countries, trade representative offices. Maybe I have mistaken. Uh, do you believe that this idea is relevant? Is it alive? And uh, what about uh, trade representative offices in different countries of the world? We have one concrete question to Pavlo about U.S. and uh, other speakers may respond to other questions. Second time after Maidan, the majority of Americans, when they uh, turn on their TV set, when they uh, watch Facebook, they find Ukraine. Ukraine, for the majority, and I know what I'm saying, in the US, it became the source of uh, problems and shadow policy and shadow economy. And uh, Trump, uh, due to some assessments, the rating among uh, Republicans 90 plus, and all uh, of them believe that uh, we are the source of the problems. Among the Democrats, the same. And uh, what is going on, this will work uh, for the midterm prospect at the minimum. And those who live in the US. Many of my friends, they say that uh, they see it in reality. This is not just only about Washington. Politicians, they understand this. But for people now, we are something that is, we are something negative for the people. And one of the aspects I'm dealing now with is the attempt to, due to creative ideas, uh, to somehow maybe not to change this trend, but at least to try to manage this trend. I believe that uh, we should try to do something about it, and this trend will increase during uh, electoral campaign, and we have signs of the situation as of today is like this, and the survey shows this, that this is a real catastrophe. About the Minister of Foreign Affairs, now uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs is much analyzed. This is a problem of functioning. Look at the government and what it responsible for in the context of the policy. This is just a structure in order to implement several key reforms, and that is all. Maybe at this stage, 
Uh, this is uh, an exit, but concerning diplomats, uh, if they are fired, I believe that uh, uh, diplomats, uh, they didn't allow uh, Russia to advance. And this is the simple answer to your question. And I'm saying seriously about it, because there was si there were signs uh, uh, that uh, Russia will continue to advance. And about trade representative offices, I believe that uh, uh, this is not good. Uh, they didn't work in Kuchma's times, and uh, business should promote business. And if it is policy to win tender for turbines in China, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs should add there. Uh, should help there. But the idea was simple to divide the world in three categories where business may function to promote business, where it should cooperate with the state, I mean business, and where only state should work. And we should understand that business uh, should promote business. We should launch expert crediting. And everyone says uh, 15 years, everyone wants to uh, put his hand on this. And uh, Latin America, Africa, we won't be able to deal with this market without support. There will be support of business, and uh, uh, otherwise we won't succeed. I would like to respond to this question. The first one was about resolutions. I worked on the resolutions. That's why I would like to say that uh, uh, the, if the text is really strong, it gets uh, less uh, uh, votes. And uh, the resolutions, they become valid documents. And we adopt resolutions year after year. These resolutions become stronger and stronger. And the, uh, there are less votes. Because the resolutions call Russia uh, uh, the violator of the norms of international law. Uh, uh, the farther we go, the more there is opposition from Russia. Um, about the role of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the system, the minister was appointed at the end of uh, August. This is election year. And uh, we should understand that there is some transition period and the new team, for some time, it will be trying to understand the system of cooperation. Look at the conclusions of Paris, the role of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and uh, its position uh, is clear there. If you, you look at Georgia case and Russian aggression in Georgia, you will see that armored aggression was open and the response of international community was really low. And we know that there were no sanctions and uh, there was no loan opposition to this. And as we understand, uh, uh, the same calculation was uh, done by Putin concerning Ukraine, that uh, international community won't respond, uh, they will just uh, provide their concerns. But uh, uh, Russian aggression uh, in Ukraine into went along another scenario. There was diplomatic track sanctions, powerful sanctions, year after year. Everyone said that the sanctions would stop and then uh, everything will be according to Georgia scenario. But uh, we continue our line and we play our own game. And about uh, economic diplomacy. Yes, there is a vision uh, concerning economization. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs this year, it was fixed in the concept of the state policy that is approved by the government and uh, that is uh, now uh, being implemented. Not going into details, I would like to say that it is based, uh, firstly, on building the comprehensive architecture of uh, the institutions uh, in Ukraine and uh, abroad to stimulate export and to get investment. But, uh, as of today, uh, this is unbalanced system that works uh, for different centers, different subjects. That's why our logic 
is to create one ecosystem in order that it works uh, for at based on the digital modern platform and uh, uh, today we should look at different angle and one of the elements is private public partnership this is not about classic approach of representative offices abroad this is partnership public private partnership about conversation formed view. Uh, I start with question of Bogdan about embassies work and that Ukrainians uh, have complaints about it. I speak with the Ukrainians uh, uh, who live abroad uh, with representatives of diaspora and they complain about embassies even those who were mentioned among the most uh, mentioned as the most efficient. They do not cooperate with communities properly, but in the modern world, uh, sometimes efficiency of your policy is not about your status and your position. This is about the number of your mobile phones of congressmen, senators, ministers whom you can call and say there is such an issue and we should speak. Uh, sometimes it's not uh, an ambassador, but entrepreneurs, some people who live abroad. So we need cooperation with these people. And for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the most important task is to uh, create this KPI and to establish uh, clear cooperation with uh, such people. And I would like to advise uh, PRISM to, uh, to get assessments from these communities who live abroad and to include it in your survey. So digitalization of different services is important. Those services that are provided to uh, citizen, uh, citizens. Uh, my friend lives in Cambodia, and uh, she, she gave birth to a child, and uh, she had to go to Vietnam Embassy three times. And uh, she works as a teacher. She get, gets five hundred dollars a month, and she needs. Uh, to get Ukrainian citizen a passport uh, for her child and uh, flying costs thousands of dollars. And we should digitalize those services to establish better contacts with Ukrainian state. And this is one positive side. But the organization of foreign policy, this was one of the ideas I came up to the prime minister and I uh, said about uh, reinforcement of our economic activity in the markets I've mentioned in the East Asia, Latin America, Africa, and uh, to understand where our potential is, how we may reach these markets, and uh, what business may go there, and the competition that is there. Some work was started. I know that uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs also joined the work, and they started an audit. This was parallel. I spoke with the minister, and he informed uh, this. I proposed the cooperation of the Institute of Strategic uh, um, Affairs, and uh, there will be some analysis, and then the strategy. I spoke with that with my colleague about the uh, trade offices. Uh, uh, without the work in the past and now, this is the mandate of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, how they are going to function, and maybe Mr. Bashta will form, uh, inform us on this about the stage this project is on. This is all from me, Anna. Uh, friends, we speak a lot about expert strategy that was developed. In these five years, for a long time, many specialists worked on it, and we are speaking about attraction of investment, and uh, we promoted the European Investment Plan, and uh, Mr. Kubilius, uh, representative of Euron, uh, head of Euronest, they have ambitious strategy, strategy 2030 for Ukraine, Georgia, and Moldova. They see some leadership of Ukraine in Eastern Partnership, and this should be used. So we are destined to become leaders or to go through really complicated processes. And the Kremlin, uh, they really rely on this. They believe that we, with our own horns, uh, will dismantle our country. And also, we do not have clear vision whom we may see as an investor. In Brussels, uh, uh, during the presentation of the strategy, uh, I heard a lot about China, so this should be European Union or powerful China. 
in uh, construction of ports and other infrastructure objects. Recent situation with motor siege and uh, the situation was inherited by this power and there are some implications for geopolicy. From one side, Ukraine says that it wants to join NATO, so key investors for motor siege and Tonov this should be the members of NATO and European Union, not the states uh, that uh, are considered as competitors of our strategic partners, competitors or hostile parties. So uh, there is no proper strategic view about who influences in uh, who invests in Ukraine and uh, how it uh, will influence the situation. So China may provide billions, but we may lose prospects of membership in NATO because uh, Bolton may fly here. And uh, one of the important questions for the future, and we should think about it in 2020, and uh, Mr. Nagala said about it, uh, what measures can be used by Ukraine in order to uh, uh, in order to uh, prevent the formation of this image of corrupt country, because they said in the U.S. during impeachment that Ukraine is on the third place concerning corruption in the world. So we should stop. Uh, we should try to stop war in terror mode, and we should fight other aspects also in terror mode. And there will be parliamentary assembly of NATO here and the uh, reform of security uh, service reform. This is a home task that uh, should be done in the law enforcement sector as well. On the 25th, 27th of April, there will be international uh, uh, zero corruption conference will be in Kiev, and uh, Zelensky will attend on the 27th of April. And this is a good opportunity during zero corruption conference. Uh, Ukraine is blamed of corruption and. Uh, they perceive us and they um, condemn us in corruption in order to provide less help. This is a great opportunity to see, uh, show that they, we are a laboratory of solutions. <clears throat> and they should not blame us of corruption because people try to cover their own corruption in Western countries by our corruption. Um, and also there will be conference uh, in Chernobyl in 26 of uh, uh, April and uh, Lithuania representatives will attend and uh, uh, we will try to dismantle the myths about Ukraine, about corruption and Chernobyl and we would like to show that uh, we fight with corruption and we have a better situation that uh, powerful news outlets try to present. Also, we should uh, see what our representatives in the World Bank do in IMF, because during these years uh, we got some credits, but what about reversible help? I believe that the government should revise who represents Ukraine in these powerful institutions and what help we get. Do we get loans or do we get the help that helps, uh, what will help us to make some quantum uh, leap. In the committee, we held some closed meetings concerning escalation of Russian aggression in, Azov in the Azov Sea events in Belarus in 2016. There were some closed meetings. Uh, Defense and Security Council, in, uh, Intelligence Service, Analytical Services, I believe that now, when we have a ministry that is trying to usurp power and discredit volunteers and Ukrainian state and the check and balances, this is the issue of internal reforms of uh, uh, special services, and they should help in uh, foreign diplomacy to efficiently counteract Russian aggression and propaganda. And. Uh, also, uh, we are not ready for some forms of aggression, and Russia now is using new innovative instruments uh, uh, against us at some platforms.
Валерий Кравченко. Uh, brief comment and a question. Uh, NATO and uh, also that uh, on the way to NATO we should find the right way. It has the opportunity of partnership is the instrument of partnership. It is the wrong way. We should be careful about it. This is the first. Second is about sanctions and U.S. Sanctions of U.S. are hellish, but in two years they become slow. First, we were speaking about SWIFT and the disconnection of Russia, and now the Switzerland company that builds Nord Stream, and there are sanctions against the company, so they say that this is hellish sanctions. Uh, so treason against France, against Germany in nine months of 2019, invested capital investments in the economy of Russia, the Federation for 5.5 billion euros. And this is 30 percent growth compared with previous year. And in Ukraine, nine months of this month, uh, 90 million euro. So this is about sanctions and how they work. And uh, also uh, American elections and uh, local elections in Ukraine, they will be monitored carefully by Russians. They will be more careful even uh, than concerning American elections. And this is not about Donbass. We know what is it is all about. The question is, during the year, de facto, uh, the SFC is the next. Among achievements you've mentioned, unfortunately, Pavlo didn't see this. The Normandy summit uh, was considered as an achievement. Diplomats should have their position. How we should respond to the annexation of the SFC? And what is the position of the diplomats concerning Donbass? Because for the next year, this will be a really acute issue. So we have only five minutes left. If you have questions, you may put it off records after this. Uh, St Stanislav Zilkovsky, and I would like to thank you for your speeches. They were really informative. For more than 10 days, Ukraine and the world uh, lives in post-Paris, post-Normandy um, stage. Uh, and despite the forecast the rhetoric uh, of Russia didn't change, it deteriorates. We know uh, about uh, yesterday's speech of Putin and rejection to return hostages. And uh, Ukraine, Georgia, Belarus, Ukraine, they, uh, it has the intention just to squeeze, uh, uh, just to ruin us. And in other countries, they work uh, more mildly in Turkey, in France, in Hungary. <coughs> there are other examples of this. We see that during the recent years, the mosaic that was compiled for a long time. Step by step, it starts to fall apart. How Ukraine and the world can oppose and prevent the emergence of the new victims of Russian aggression in different areas to preserve and strengthen the world coalition? Thank you. We have five minutes. So the questions are rather concrete. <laughs> and when, then we would like to hear some conclusions from you. But first, answers to the questions to Svetlana and Petro. I would like to start with Stanislav. You asked about Normandy and strengthening of coalition. I believe that what was said in the preliminary speeches of speakers, all those uh, mentioned tens of strategic areas in economic, uh, uh, European integration, economic strengthening, our fight for preservation of coalitions and sanctions. These are all those areas to answer your question about Normandy. I believe that Ukraine 
should see that there are no preconditions that Russia wants to stop the slow and the stabilization of Ukraine and wants to stop uh, 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 it wants to stop European and uh, uh, Euro-Atlantic integration, and we should understand this, and we should base our position in uh, negotiations with European counterparts and with Russia based on this. And uh, uh, it depends on the uh, on the use of the instruments, and uh, we should aspire full-fledged membership. I heard the opinion of some NATO officials. Why do you need this IOP? This is not the membership. But how can we be able to use this partnership in order to see us as members and to work to achieve this goal. I would like to state that Georgia, they have this partnership and uh, they have a partnership in the agenda, but uh, hellish sanctions, you mixed everything in one. Hellish sanctions uh, is one, sanctions concerning Nord Stream is another thing. I believe that this is one of the biggest achievements in foreign policy of Ukraine, those sanctions that appeared concerning Switzerland compiled seas in order to start uh, uh, Nord Stream. This is not only the result of today's power, deputies, ministers, NAFTA gas, president, government, parliament, uh, during all these three years they fought for this. A lot has been done in order to reach this result. This decision provides some prospect of delay of uh, building Nord Stream, and this is an important story about SWIFT. This was one of the conditions. I never heard uh, any serious uh, uh, promise from American or European counterparts to impose such sanctions uh, uh, for the use of SWIFT by Russia. I believe that this is not uh, correct. That this is not uh, some uh, failure of Ukraine that SWIFT was n uh, not uh, removed from them. Uh, so we uh, clearly understand how uh, the situation develops concerning Nord Stream. Investment is about business. It's not only the issue uh, concerning the state. We created. Uh, did we create proper conditions concerning corruption and raiding uh, customs police in order to see 5.5 billion here? I may mention tens or hundreds of problems and investigations starting defense sector and in raiding uh, uh, foreign investors. They were stopped. Uh, in their wish uh, to invest in Ukraine. That's why this issue is really of highest priority for us. Petro, what about the Azov Sea? What we may do about the Azov Sea? We should see what happened with Crimea. The issue of Kerch Strait, and uh, this is the issue of occupation. Crimea is occupied by Russia. From both sides of Kerch Strait, there is a territory of Russia, and uh, it controls the strait. If we say that this is a blockade or uh, not allowing to go through, they should consider this. How may Ukraine resolve this? The fact of occupation is identified, and uh, uh, we work on this first uh, military capabilities, the issue of control or a security policy or capability to resolve any uh, defense issue. Um, uh, this is the issue of ca capabilities, and we work uh, together with NATO to reinforce Ukrainian capabilities and in order to increase presence of NATO in the uh, Black Sea and to patrol and monitor the situation. And the second track is uh, uh, legal, and uh, uh, the, uh, the cases are filed to the international courts. And uh, also, I would like to comment uh, on enhanced partnerships. Partnership. This is not a dichotomy issue. Uh, often people say about treason and fa uh, and uh, successes, but. Uh, this is about interoperability partnership. 
to approximate the NATO countries with the partners outside NATO in order to implement the standards and to work on uh, um, cooperation. And Ukraine is going to its membership in NATO, and this program helps us to become closer with NATO and uh, better cooperate with them about the Normandy format. We also understand our strategy. We are trying to implement uh, the Minsk agreements as we see it. We put our red lines. If we do not succeed, uh, we have other options. Peacekeeping mission. We should not forget about international law. If some political agreements do not work, political uh, law, uh, international law may help us regulate these issues outside these agreements. And uh, at the end, uh, one sentence each about 2019. What was more, success or failures in 2018, in your opinion? I would like to start one word. Uh, we need more struggle. I support Svetlana. This year was really hard. The result we have, I believe it is positive this year. 2019 is one year of our life, our personal life and life of Ukraine. And in life, we have always some white and black stripes. And I believe that this was not black or white stripe. I believe that uh, the next uh, two or three years will be the most important for survival of our country. They will be the most difficult. That's what I want to say, that w they will be more difficult, and we should get prepared to it, this. Starting 2013, uh, uh, in November, when we went to Maidan, this is now no non-stop mode. You live with this uh, perception that this big goal, uh, you are just going in the process. And this is the main characteristic of the last six years. No matter how, uh, what you did, you may, you cannot stop. You just, you cannot say that Ukraine in, is in safety. This is, uh, uh, this is um, about our territorial uh, integrity, about our sovereignty, and there should not be treason. Uh, and uh, uh, Zelensky, he became the candidate, and then he, um, uh, he agreed to play this game where politics uh, uh, dominate, and there were issues of privatization, and uh, he went along the wrong way. For me, Paris is a failure, but uh, it is really painful for me. I saw the interview of Rieslikov. He said that we were, for the first time during such negotiations, we didn't have experience. And what about the protocol? But this is about tickets, about some meals. But maybe you, they should have asked to uh, uh, Pavlo Anatolievich or Yelisev or Poroshenko. Uh, to ask uh, these people how to win this uh, um, game. We should understand that we are all, all temporary, but Ukraine should be top priority. We should get around, uh, we should get around this idea. Uh, we should be together and uh, Poroshenko uh, uh, maybe he could tell about his mistakes to Zelensky in order not to repeat these uh, errors. And in 2019, uh, we understand that uh, those years that are ahead of us, they will be even more difficult than those years uh, that we had in our struggle uh, to end at a positive note. Uh, during all these years, maybe the, one of the main factors that was uh, underestimated 
uh, was the issue of uh, cooperation of civil society and analytical centers. And politicians often do not understand each other. They argue, and uh, experts are more unanimous. And I believe that uh, in the future, uh, they say that this liberal order uh, has died, but you should not. Uh, um, uh, but uh, you should not stop, and uh, we believe that civil society, expert community may influence the situation, and uh, uh, the, uh, we should continue with our struggle. So, uh, thank you very much, and we are waiting you uh, for our um, uh, new events in April. Thank you.